How did you get into F class? Well, I used to uh, go and shoot local matches here in Bellingham, uh, 300 yard matches. It's a plantation range, it's a nice range. Uh, and Gary Rasmussen used to live here. Uh, he's moved about 30 miles uh, south of here. They still can call it local. Mm-hmm. But he used to run those matches. And, and um, I used to shoot sling with a scope. Mm-hmm. And basically, there were only like three or four guys in my category that had the matches. Uh, the matches were every month. Mm-hmm. And I used to win those matches because I was only three or five. Because you were cheating. To beat. <laughs> <laughs> I usually had a pretty good rifle. Uh, back then, of course, we didn't know what we know today about rifles and barrels and all that. So, uh, and then uh, one day, um, you know, he uh, told me about F class. He says, you know about F class? And I said, no, I don't. And he says, you can, you can uh, now use your scoped rifle and you can rest it on a front press. I said, really? I said, my left wrist is hurting from that sling. So I, uh, I'll try it out. So I tried it out and my shooting got a lot better. My, my points were a lot better, obviously, because I'm resting the front end uh-huh. on, on, a, on the front rest. And then uh, this, this is a little bit uh, quite interesting. I got very busy with my business. And I was working 14-hour days. I had no time to read or shoot or any of that stuff. And uh, I was away from it for about seven, eight years. And then uh, 9-11 happened. Well, before we get into that, let's talk about your business because mo- a, a lot of people may not know who you, you know which business. And when you say busy, it's... It has a different, uh, it's all relative, right? Yeah, it's, it's all relative. Uh, but, I was so, building Grizzly Industrial, which is grizzly.com. It's a big business. You know, we got about 300 people working for us. Uh-huh. Right. And over the years, it's, it's grown quite a bit. And, and it just requires a lot of, uh, uh, you know, if you're the captain, you have to be at the helm. Right, right. So, so you were building, building Grizzly International. How did how did Grizzly happen to be like where, where I know I'm all over the place, but I think all this has to do with who you have became. You know what I mean? It's, I, I, I think everything is tied to your personality and, you know, who this is something that I've always told people is like the people that are winning. They're not just winners in this sport. They're just winners in life. They, they, they have that approach to the sport as they would approach anything else. And typically when I see somebody who's successful at, at F class or adventurist or, you know, shooting sport, they're just a competitive person that they just want to win at everything. Am I, am I too far off or is that fairly? No, you're consistent? dead on, man. You're absolutely dead <laughs> on. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I was school captain of the uh, badminton team and I was extremely competitive. I sp- mm-hmm. played all the sports. I, played. I came from Kenya, Africa. It's mm-hmm. a British colony. And so grew up under the British education system. Um, I played soccer, field hockey. I was on the school field hockey team. So I was very competitive. Uh, played soccer just about every single night. Mm-hmm. In the and so it was... Uh, and then asking about how Grizzly started, it's actually... Uh, funny because it's tied into shooting. Mm-hmm. I was at a shooting range and, and uh, shooting pistol and this guy, you know, make a long story short, this guy was a machinist, went to his house, I saw this machine, I saw the lathe. I didn't know what it was, I asked him what it was and at that time I had to have a lathe and so I started saving up money to buy a used lathe in the process I started buying used lathes and selling them to make enough money so I could afford a lathe. Uh, so I bought little pieces of junk and fixed them up and painted them and resold them for $30, $40 more. Turned into a business, started making money. I said, wow, this could be a, a money-making proposition. And here we are. It's a huge business. And, and so uh, it's all tied in. When I, when I look at things and, and uh, karma and, and circumstances, it's amazing that shooting re- led me to my current business and I'm still shooting, shooting different things, but still shooting and still yeah, love shooting. It's amazing. And, and again, it's, it's, uh, 
it's just it's just incredible how one thing like you said ties to the next and the next and the next it's it's like building blocks you know what i mean yep. um and and it, it it all has to be with the big vision right you you, you want it you know and, and and you want it a lathe most people go and they just save up for a lathe and they buy a lathe but then you're like you know what if i fix this one and i sell it i can make so i don't know you just made a business out of it a big one now yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a big business. I didn't have, I started with nothing. I didn't have $500. I didn't have any money. I borrowed five, my first $500 for my sister to be able to buy those used lathes. Mm -hmm. And I bought this lathe for 150 bucks and sold it, you know, for a little bit more after I painted it, you know. Yeah. Put some lipstick on the pig and sold it off. <laughs> 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 but I mean, it's it's incredible. I mean, and that that that, you know, your whole story in itself is, I find it fascinating. Um, again, I want to, I want to keep it mainly shooting related, but, but uh, you know, in your book, the story about the socks and, and that's how the book starts, but it, that automatically grabbed me because, uh, and I don't want to give it, this is the book we're talking about. This is Ross's book. If you guys got to go get it. It's, it's, it's a really good book, uh, but the socks story. Okay. I, I was born in Mexico, okay? And one day we're walking through the street, just kind of in the, in the market. And uh, it was my mom and my sister. Then it was me. Then it was my older brother. And then my dad. That's how we would always walk. My dad was always behind so he could kind of <laughs> watch the herd, right? <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, we're just walking. And there's all these people selling on the street, right? Selling whatever, fruit and whatever and we get to a intersection and we stop and then i hear my dad absolutely lose his shit <laughs> he lost his shit and he asked my brother where did you get that and of course i turn around and my brother had i think he had pecans in his hand and my dad just lost it where did you get that where did you get that and my brother finally fessed up and he's what he did is he walked by a stand where somebody was selling pecans and they were right there. So he just grabbed a handful and thought nothing of it. So we had to go back and my brother had to apologize to the man. And my dad bought, I think it was pecans it may have been an apple. I don't remember, but the, 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 the point is my dad just, and it was like the socks. It was really easy to just grab it. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean it's right. Yeah. And that instilled something in you that, uh, it lives with you to, to this day. Yeah, because it was something, you know, if you think about it, it's like it was something so minor, but it wasn't, right? The, no, the, the, point was, the point was not the pecan. Yeah. It was the, the act. Yeah. You know? The point is, you know, taking something that doesn't belong to you and not paying for it and, and whatever. So, it's, so, uh, so obviously it's, you have the work ethic, right? Because, you know, everybody has ideas. It's just so many people have a lot of ideas, but implementing the ideas and you know they, they say they say uh a goal is a dream with work clothes on right <laughs> you take a dream and you dress it up in work clothes and that becomes a goal yeah um where does your work ethic come from because i mean like i said anybody could have just said oh, i'm just gonna save up money and but you decided i'm gonna work and now you turn it into grizzly you know that's a that's a good question. I I I don't know where my work ethic comes from. I, that's the way I've always been. In the beginning, when I had my business, I was I thought everybody should be like me, and my wife told me they're not. You're a different person. You know, everybody's slightly different. They're not going to work like you. And so I realized, you know, not not even my own siblings were had the work ethic that I did. And so everybody, my father did. And so I think maybe that's where I got it from. It, it's, it's a trait that came down through him. Uh, he was very hardworking, worked long hours, and he was, uh, you know, he, was, he, he wanted to have his, his uh, family comfortable because he came from a very poor background, like very poor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there were, it's in the book. But by the way, the, the name of the book is, is uh, A Bad Case of Capitalism. So just FYI, 
If yeah. you look at Amazon, it's called a bad case of capitalism. It tells you what a crazy capitalist I am, I am and how many <laughs> companies I have gone through and uh, currently on. I've got about 16 companies right now. So it's, it keeps me busy still, even though I'm kind of trying to uh, semi-retire. Right. But I am, uh, you know, it's a ball and chain around my ankle. Well, uh, it's, it, it's it, just what, it's just one of those things. My dad's always been very hardworking and, you know, I think, I don't know, I would consider myself hard worker, but, uh, my dad, for sure, that's where I got it from. You know, it's, it's, he's always doing to this day. My dad just turned, well, he's a year older than you. And I know that, I know that because of the book. <laughs> How old like, am I, Eric? You're 69. <laughs> no, right so, on. <laughs> um, my dad, my dad just turned 70 because he, you know, you were born in 52 and he was born in 51. Wow. So you're a young guy, man. I'm, I just turned 41. Oh, geez. That's a kid. <laughs> but, my dad just, you know, he just turned 70 and uh, he, he lives down the road from me. So we see him drive by and whatever, but you know, he's, he goes to the ranch. He still has cattle. He goes and feeds cattle every day and uh, yeah. he doesn't it's look busy. 70. Yeah. He keeps busy his whole yeah. life, but it's, it's something that I, I can't, I can't sit at home and say, Hey, I'm retired now. You know, I've got plenty of money. I don't need to work anymore. That's, I would die. I mean, I would be here <sighs> So, so I, I've, you know, I've went on a journey myself. Now, now we're talking about personal, which, which it ties into shooting everything. Like I said, it all ties together, you know, right. like for me, I have went into a journey of uh, literally studying people that are very successful, you know, and it's very common. They're all very hard workers. <laughs> That, that, that's that's a common trait and they don't work for money they they the money it just the money just comes in but they they, they have a separate it's like a, a separate goal like kind of like you're saying because if they only work for money at some point they would just quit yeah but i could have quit 20 years ago yeah I, but it's not uh, the money it's, it's not the money it's just that that they got to be busy and it's a drive it's a drive and, 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 and the, the, the more money you have, it gets easier because I mean, at some point you do worry about the money. Don't get me wrong. Right. You have to worry about the money, but at some point it gets money more, makes you worry. Right. But at some <laughs> point the money you don't worry about, but then you still just keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding. Yeah. And, and that's where most people don't understand. They go, why you already have the money. Well, it's and that's the switch that people a lot of people don't understand. It's, it was never about the money. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because you know uh, we used to play badminton with uh, with a guy that was he was about twenty years younger than me, and he was about thirty five back then. I was about you know fifty five, and we were sitting there while others are playing, and he says he's in my home. I have a gym in my home. We're playing badminton in my home, and uh, he says, you know, if I had your money. I wouldn't be working. I said, Larry, if you had my, if you had my, if you had my money, you wouldn't be me. I mean, if, if you had, if I had your attitude, you wouldn't be me. You wouldn't have the money. You have to work hard. You can't just give up because you have the money and to get the money, you have to have something in you. Right. Well, like I said, they think it's about the money. Um, yeah, I've heard that, not. you know, a, a lot of people say, well, if I had their money, I, uh, you know, for example, you know, my, my uncle, my monk, my uncle was a very, very wealthy man, very wealthy man. And uh, people would always say like, um, he, he dro drove, he didn't drive a brand new truck every year. You know, he just had a good truck and uh, he, you know, he, you go to his ranch, he had a lot of ranches, a lot of ranch. He was a big rancher and he had a lot of cattle and, you know, older tractors. They were good, but they were older tractors. Uh, long story short, he passed away. He left it all to his son. Well, his son, the first thing he did is like, you know what? I, I don't know why dad never bought any tractors. So he bought new tractors. Then he went, bought, went and bought a new truck. And then, uh, you know, he'd go see all his ranches that his dad left him. And then he said, you know, that ranch over there, it's kind of far. That's kind of out of my way. I'm just going to sell the cattle so I don't have to go watch those cows every, every time because they're kind of out of my way. So he sold the cattle. 
right? And then it didn't take long before he said, well, you know what? If I don't have no cattle, why do I need the ranch? So he sold the ranch. Long story short, he sold, his dad left him all that money when he was in his 20s. His dad passed away. And when it took him 40 years, but he pretty much went bankrupt around 60. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's because yeah. he just he just didn't know. He thought it was about the money, right? Well, and he always a, said, if, 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 if I was my dad, I would buy me tractors. Yeah, there is a saying, the first generation makes it, the second generation spends it, and the third generation kills it. So yeah. he, if he survived, you know, this guy went ahead and spent all his money, but if had he survived, his, his children certainly would have killed his business. So Yeah, so it's, 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 uh, it's very strange, or it's, it's, a, it's a familiar thing that I've seen. I mean, I've seen it in my own family where uh, I've had family members that are absolutely just wealthy, and I mean wealthy, and then their children or their grandchildren would just kill it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It is. It is. It is. So, work for it. Tonight I'm feeling me. Gonna make an ugly scene. Tonight.